It was 2006. I was out in Roppongi, Japan, with some friends. For those of you that don't know, Roppongi is a mecca of partying in Tokyo, where the bars and clubs stay open for 24 hours. So it was me and two of my best friends going out this particular night. This was our crew, and we always went out to Roppongi every weekend. We were young, and it was fun. There, we would meet girls from all over the world. Japanese, Korean, Russian, Colombian, you name it, they were there. And they really liked Americans because we were considered exotic. My friends and I would catch a train for an hour to get there. The only bad thing is the train shut down at 12.30, so if we missed that, we would be stuck there and have to drink and dance the night away. Oh, bummer, right? Our plan was never really to catch the train back, though. What would be the point of that? We usually went to a place called Gas Panic, and eventually we'd go to these after-hours clubs at 5 o'clock if we didn't want to go home yet. There were definitely some weird people in there, but I guess we were weird too since we were still drinking when the sun was up. We met some girls at Gas Panic, and we were all dancing on the stage, getting the crowd hyped up. It was like a concert, and it was so much fun. We were all having a good time, and these girls were gorgeous. The next step would be to get out of here with them. It was all set up, and all we had to do was wait for the girls to be ready to leave. After a while, we were all still dancing and having a great time when I noticed the girls were not there anymore. I told the guys, and we were all just so defeated. We spent a lot of time with them, and we thought we had it in the bag. Now we were back to square one. We all decided to leave and get some pizza at this great New York pizza place and discuss our options. We were all pretty drunk and blue balled, so we decided to go to this place called Bar Maxim. We got there, and it was not very busy, but there were a few hotties. They were definitely less good looking, but they were still good looking. They approached us immediately when we walked in by dancing all sexy towards us. I guess we would be okay here. I heard a thick Russian accent when my girl, the tall blonde with blue eyes, was whispering in my ear asking me what my name was. The other guys were sitting in a VIP booth and Anya and I joined them. We were all drinking and talking when they put something in our mouths in a sexy way and told us they were going to give us the greatest time of our lives. Well in Rome, right? All three of us were sitting in VIP with the girls in front of us dancing seductively, obviously for us to get us excited for what we were about to do at their hotel room. I was really starting to feel good from whatever they gave us. I could feel the bass from the speakers going through my body in waves over and over again. I must admit, it felt pretty good. I was leaning back hard and looking around at the now crowded club maxim. I looked at Anya's beautiful face when I noticed a distortion in my reality. Anya's face changed back and forth from a beautiful face to a demonic face. It was like she was actually a demon wearing a beautiful girl's skin. I saw the same thing on everybody else's face. To me, it looked like there were 200 demons all dancing and looking directly at me. I asked my friends if they saw what I saw. They were both staring at the ceiling in ignorant bliss. So when they looked at the dance floor, they saw 200 demons staring directly at them as well. We all jumped up and had the biggest surprised eyes of our lives. Our hearts were pounding and we were breaking into a sweat. I told everyone to stay calm and follow me. We made our way to the front door of the club telling our once beautiful Russian ladies that we had to make a call outside. We got to the door and opened it to a blazing bright sun. It was such a shock to see the bright light that one of my friends threw up instantly. We all huddled together and struggled to get to the closest train station we could find. Everyone we passed by had a rotating human and demon face. There can't be this many demons. This is crazy. We finally made it to the train, and the doors closed. We woke up at 2.30 in the afternoon, extremely hungover, 
and raking up booze, we looked at the train location and realized we were still in Rapungi. Since we had fallen asleep, we missed our stop and rode the train back and forth over and over. The good news is we didn't see the demon faces anymore though. So we rode the train back home and licked our wounds from that crazy night. Whatever those girls gave us was some crazy psychedelic and we were not ready for that. I guess it was supposed to make us feel more pleasure, but it was a bad batch and we saw a bunch of demonic faces instead. It was a good thing we didn't have a heart attack or something. The moral of the story is, if you strike out, don't double down. If you double down, don't take candy from strangers. You might end up in a worse position. We had a massive group with us, and we were headed to a Tiesto concert in Shinkiba in Tokyo. The club was called Ageha. The club could hold 5,000 people and was an epic party destination. Sadly, it closed in 2022, but we had one of the most crazy and unsettling nights of our lives. Our group consisted of 25 guys and one Korean girl that was dating one of the guys they called Wild Bill. Wild Bill, that's me, was a party animal that put this whole thing together always trying to outdo the last epic party with a new and better one with more people. Su Yun was in love with Wild Bill, and she was living in Japan and going to college and really figuring out if Japanese people did not like Koreans. The answer is yes and no. While she did have many friends that were Japanese, there were a few businesses that would refuse her service because of her nationality even though she spoke fluent Japanese. But because of her language ability, everyone in the group was asking her to translate this and that. After an hour and a half of 25 Americans drinking chew highs on the train, the locals were happy to see us all leave when we got to our destination. We got to Ageha and stopped the massive line for Tiesto tickets with our VIP backstage passes. This was going to be epic. The show started and it was mayhem. Lights flashing and loud music. We all started out together, but we were slowly separated due to huge waves of crowds engulfing our group. The concert wrapped up and there were still three hours until the train started back up. Our massive group regrouped and we headed to the rooftop bar with a pool in the middle of the bar. We were all having drinks, talking about the concert when one of our guys, Isaac, sees a guy punch a girl in the face from a distance. He immediately jumps up and gets in the guy's face. The guy lets go of the girl and gets in Isaac's face. There were six of us watching this from a distance, ready to pounce. The showdown ended with Isaac punching the guy right in the nose. When that happened, four big guys stood up at a nearby table and jumped on Isaac. Our group was instantly reunited with all 25 of us coming out of everywhere to jump on these guys. We rescued Isaac and beat those guys down until they begged for us to stop. The security rounded all of us up, including the girl, and questioned us. It turns out that this girl was under duress by this group of guys. They took her passport and were holding her hostage for weeks. She couldn't escape. The thing that saved her that night was the fact that we had so many guys with us four guys that we beat were massive and would not have gone down any other way than a full swarm. I hear that girl still writes to Isaac to tell him how much she appreciates him stepping in when he saw a woman get punched at a rooftop bar. When you see something wrong, do something about it. A few of us had just gone to a baseball game in Tokyo and we're looking for some fun bar to hang out at for a little while before we caught the train back home. A friend had recommended a place in Shibuya called Fields. When we got off the train, we were all walking towards Fields when we saw a place that offered all you could drink for 3,500 yen, which was like 35 bucks. We were not big partiers, but this place was a sports bar and did have all you could drink beer and liquor for the same price 
two or three beers would cost with a cover charge at Fields. It made logical sense, so we walked up the stairs to the bar. We walked in and saw sports playing on multiple TVs. This was perfect. We ordered some beers and started chatting about the game we just saw. Japanese baseball is so much fun to go see. If you haven't experienced that, you're really missing out. A shot girl came around to see if we wanted any shots. We said, okay, fine, but just one shot. We took it, and we were feeling nice and buzzed. I wish that one shot was all we did that night. We were all talking when three women surrounded us and started talking to us. They pretty much squeezed into empty spots, since guys don't like to sit directly next to each other for some reason. They told us that they were also just at the Swallows game, and were looking for some cheap drinks before they headed back to Yokohama. We were having a great time when the shot girl came by and asked if we wanted shots. The women said yes, and basically peer pressured us into taking another one. Then another. Then another. We were all getting pretty drunk and forgot that we had come here to have one drink and go home. By the time I realized what was happening, I looked up and noticed all the sports games were off. The TVs were all replaced with psychedelic graphics going to the beat of EDM music. I realized I had messed up my logical plan. I was dragged onto the dance floor and began dancing with the girl I was talking to. The rest is really a blur, and I don't know what happened after that. I woke up under a table in the bar. My wallet was gone, and so were my friends. I stumbled out of the bar with the earth moving so violently under my feet I couldn't even walk. I used the wall for stability. I wandered around a while and saw two figures in the distance running towards me. It was my buddies, and they were in bad shape too. They took our wallets, they said. I managed to get out. Me too. So with no wallets, we had to get a wire transfer from a Western Union and cash the check at a convenience store in the morning to make it back home. I guess in hindsight, we got work pretty good. We went to an all-you-can-drink bar, and we had all we could drink. We met some women that knew we would be out of our minds and took the easy money. Nice scam. So after that, I never went to an all-you-can-drink bar in Japan again. One time was enough. All of us were sitting in VIP with the girls in front of us dancing seductively right there. Right there. Ugh. It was such a shock to see the bright light. One of my friends threw... Ew. You minded... You minded... Ugh. A shot... A shot girl came around. I am around... A shot girl came. They told us that they were just at, um, shit. We went to an all you drink bar. Uh, we went to an all you, uh, all you drink.